everybody stand stabilize your life is mine you awoke me Submit! Okay, so hey y'all, um, welcome to this very, very odd YouTube video because this is not really my usually not usually my type of content that i usually do but i wanted to try something out and experiment a little so welcome to this um i don't know what to call it i don't know if i'm gonna call it a ningguang showcase or ningguang guide i guess we'll see but this is what my ningguang looks like and i'm hoping that i can give a few tips and tricks as a ningguang main myself <laughs> um because recently she did get a skin in the previous event so, you know, if you want to start building your Ningguang, you, maybe you thought she was cool in the in the Archon quests. Here she is. And I'm here to um, inform you all about the girl boss herself, Ningguang. So, yeah. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so, what is Ningguang's role? I personally use my Ningguang as a main DPS, an on-field main DPS. But you could also use her as a quick swap character in a quick swap team. My Ningguang is my most well-built character in my in my team. Let's just let's just show you show you um, my stats. So I have 2k attack, I have 60% crit rate, and 153 crit damage. I feel like that's a good ratio. I could get a little more um, crit rate and crit damage, but given the artifacts and weapon that I have. Uh, this is the best that I could have done. This is the best that I could have done. Luckily, I got Skyward Atlas uh, on Standard Banner once. So I do have a 5-star weapon on her, which is pretty pretty decent with uh, Ningguang. Her weapons that are really good, if you were here during the event, uh, the Dodoko Tails is a very, very, very good catalyst, especially for main DPS on field Ningguang. It's a very good catalyst for um, for her. Uh, with Sith is also very good, although if you get the uh, Elemental Mastery bonus, your Crystallizes are going to be so good, y'all. So, uh, Solar Pearl. And it looks so good with her base skin. So, Solar Pearl is like one of the best weapons. So, like all of these four stars that I leveled up basically are good on her. Um, and if you do play, uh, Map of Mare is really good. Um, but it does have Elemental Mastery substat, which is pretty useless since she is a Geo character. Um, Prototype Amber is okay if you want to do like a support Ningguang build. It's it's honestly acceptable. So Ningguang can be played in a ver various different ways. So honestly, it's up to your playstyle and how you want to play her and how you want to add her into your team. I play her as the main TPS on field. So yeah. And for my artifacts... I went two piece noblesse and two piece archaic petra, uh, for fifteen bo uh fifteen percent more bonus, ge uh, geo damage and twenty percent more burst damage because I do tend to have a lot of um uh, burst uptime with her, so this is uh the build that I personally like because it depends on your playstyle because if you like auto attack Ningguang. Um, you could definitely replace the two-piece noblesse with maybe two-piece um, Shimanawas or slash gladiator. So yeah, I feel like those are the only ones that are like only builds that are very, very good. Like that are really, really boosting in Guang's damage to the max potential. I mean, I, I guess four-piece Shimanawas could be really good as well. But then a lot of her damage is coming from her burst. So y'all could pause to read and stuff. But I do have this. Um, I feel like my feather could definitely use a little more, a little more of both. Okay, so I also forgot um, to explain her her talents. Oh my god! And also, if my voice sounds weird, it's because I'm recording this another day, and that uh, um, I just woke up. 
so yeah so her abilities so her normal attacks she basically throws two rocks at the same time on a single target and then you will have these star jades you can have up to three star jades and then if you charge attack they're gonna consume every single star jades and that's basically like her normal attacks and charge attack the star jades don't really add that much damage so that's why it's better to charge attack with uh ningguang a lot more than just normal attacking so you just normally uh you would you would think that you would have to do three normal attacks and then charge attack but it's still better to normal attack charge attack normal attack charge attack her elemental skill is basically she summons a jade screen in front and dealing like a burst of damage in front of her aoe which is very powerful okay so i also forgot to mention that um ningguang can block enemy projectiles like how i'm showing it on the screen so it really depends on which projectiles um the enemy is throwing because i know that it can block like killer trails um arrows the <laughs> the ruin guards missiles and probably like a bunch more like abyss mages attacks like kind of every single one except for like the pyro when it does the little fiery fiery thing on the ground she can't block that her elemental burst is she just basically summons rocks and then throws them at someone there's a mechanic where if you have your jade screen up and you use your star shatter it's also gonna uh, summon more rocks from the jade screen consuming the jade screen like shattering it and adding six additional rocks to your initial ultimate i do have her uh c6 should i explain her constellations okay so basically her c1 makes your auto attacks aoe um her c2 is probably one of her best constellations in my opinion um basically when your jade screen shatters your jade screen resets which is very very good because uh when you do burst <laughs> it counts as shattering your jade screen so it resets your uh your elemental skill which is pretty pretty neat so probably th those are the most important constellations on ningguang because otherwise these are kind of not it no, just saying because like this gives more elemental resistance when your jade screen is up like that's fun and this gives extra star jades when you do uh use your elemental burst which is extra damage which is good but honestly her most important constellations are these two like the c2 that's personally for me um her jade screen also if you walk through her jade screen you also get bonus geo damage that is also good to know and also this a lot of people don't know this but every time you have a star jade and you do charge attack um you don't you don't consume stamina there are many teams that you could go with her um you always always want geo resonance so if you don't have zhongli as your shielder maybe you could use um noel since she can shield and this is basically like so easy to build and you also get a guaranteed noel in that one beginner banner i think right so you always want to go to geos that's for sure like you want geo resonance because it does give you um increased i mean shield strength kind of don't care but uh you deal 15 percent um more damage and decrease their geo resistance by 20 so Geo resistance is a must. I also put Bennett, which is my healer and also like a buffer. And here is very, it's a very like flexible spot. Sometimes I I put Yanfei for uh, Pyro resonance and I give her uh, Thrilling Tails so that she can buff my Ningguang every time like I do the swapping sweepy, sweepy swappy thingy. Or you could use Shang Ling because she is very good, very free to play friendly, very valuable so and does a lot of damage and a lot of aoe but i do put goru because i do have him and i am planning on building him like even more because right now he's kind of kind of not it it's not it's not the goru that i want to to showcase but yeah he does he does buff geo uh, mono geo teams and i felt like he was a perfect fit for this although ningguang can't really use his uh defense buff but it is it is pretty decent with uh this team which i love i really don't know how to make guys could i just like get some footage right now okay so i have a bunch of tips for ningguang gameplay because um 
I would want to teach y'all how to play Ningguang um, more efficiently because why wouldn't you want a few tips and tricks with Ningguang? Uh, this is when you do normal attacks without pressing a movement key. It is... It is fast, but it definitely could be improved if you do hold down a movement key. It is significantly like faster. So that's a thing that you could keep in mind. And also when you want to unleash a bunch of uh, charge attacks, just make sure to um, let go. Every time that you charge attack, you have to let go of your, of your thing, of your movement key. Bye. So as you can see here, I'm letting go every time I charge attack. And also this is the most optimal way to I This is the most optimal way to play Ningguang is to auto attack, charge attack, or even two times auto attack and then charge attack. Although you get more da ramping damage with uh the more star jades that you have, but it's just um it's not it's more worth it to charge attack more because it has a really big uh, multiplier. And also uh when you do burst, if you have C6, don't forget to charge attack right after because that is I think that I do also still struggle with because I'm not used to C6 since I just got her on the leeway um, event. This is also very known. What, when you do use an elemental skill, press it and then burst and then use another elemental skill. So you could have three Jade screens basically. And as you can see, I get more value from just normal attacking and charging, uh, charge attacking. Right, it's the way I almost killed her already. Well, now what? So here's the combo with Ningguang. I usually go with this rotation, right? I E, normally dealt with it. Go through the wall, and then you just just go boss like that. I didn't even charge attack after, and I didn't even E after. So like, there's really a lot of damage potential with Ningguang. And as long as you build her properly and you have really good artifacts, she does take a lot of time and investment, but trust me, it's very, very much worth it. So, oh, her downsides. Okay, so her downsides, I guess Ningguang's downsides could probably be the fact that she is very immobile. Very immobile and takes a lot of time and investment for her to like really, um, if you want her to be a main DPS. She does take a lot of time and investment, but it is worth it at the end, at least for me. Um, I don't know about y'all though. <laughs> she could be boring for some people because like auto attack, charge attack, it's giving very got new vibes, but for me personally, it's it, it's okay. Oh my god, I also forgot to mention that one of Ningguang's downside is sometimes her um, rocks do have a weird aiming system, locking on six, six them, system. Um, and her rocks, she needs a lot of space to really maximize her damage. Um, because when she does uh, all, her rocks tend to shatter on walls, for example, or on Zhongli's pillars. So make sure that when you do burst with Ningguang is when you have a lot of space or else it's really a lot of wasted damage. I hope I I somehow convinced y'all to be little Ningguang mains. <laughs> Okay, so my dumbass forgot to record an outro for this video. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching the whole video. And make sure to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more, I mean, I guess, um, guide of my mains <laughs> that I play on Genshin. And make sure to check me out on, uh, on Twitch because I do stream uh, on Twitch and also join my Discord server because that's where I usually announce um, when I'm going live and stuff like that. Um, I also announced on Twitter that I'm live, and yeah, and recently I've been getting into TikTok, and I've been just posting some K-pop content, so if you want some K-pop content, go over to my TikTok page, and over there I post some K-pop covers, and yeah, that's it, thank you so much for watching, bye!